You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension, a dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Yes, dear. Come in the house. I've got a bone to pick with you. Uh, what's wrong, Helen? Look at what I did to my hand. Ooh, what happened? I was cleaning the basement, and I cut it on that stupid metal contraption you brought home yesterday. Oh, no. The accelerator bracket. Uh, are you all right? Uh, do you need me to clean it with hydrogen peroxide? Or should we go to the ER? No, no. I finally got the bleeding to stop by myself. I thought I was going to hemorrhage to death. Oh, thank goodness. What? I mean, it's good you were able to stop the bleeding. What is that stupid bracket doing down there anyway? Well, I needed to complete my experiments. Your experiments? That's all I ever hear about. I can't believe I gave up a successful modeling career to marry such a geek. Oh, this ridiculous hobby of yours is getting out of hand, Edgar. Well, it's more than a hobby, dear. Yes, you're right. It's an obsession. You're constantly down there tinkering with that pile of junk you built. How about spending some time fixing the problems we have in the house? How about repairing that leaky roof, Edgar, or the garbage disposal that keeps breaking down? Well, I'll get to all of that, Helen. I promise. It's just that I'm so close to a breakthrough. If I can just figure out how to break down the molecules into subatomic particles... The only breakdown around here is going to be mine unless you get rid of that oversized erector set. Do they know you're bringing all that equipment home from work? No, but they don't really need to. You see, it's all equipment they've discarded. They don't use it anymore. Ah, in other words, you're going garbage picking behind the lab and then dumping it in our basement. Why don't you just do these experiments at work? Well, because the facility isn't doing any more research with... Uh, with what, Edgar? Well, it's, it's not important for you to know, Helen. I, I don't want to waste your time talking shop. You're one to talk about wasting time. Maybe if you'd put this much thought into your job, you'd be able to get a promotion. Well, the only kind of promotion available to someone at my level would be a project manager. What's wrong with that? Well, I'm not the managerial type, Helen. I'd be dealing with budgets, you know, giving evaluations to personnel, writing reports for upper management. Yes, and that's why managers make the big money. But I'm an engineer. I'm good at working with equipment, not people. I like calculating formulas, not salaries. I'd be terrible in a managerial position, Helen. I'd be wasting my time. You don't seem to mind wasting your time outside while my life's fluid is gushing out of me. Where were you, anyway? Across the street, meeting the new neighbors. Hmm, they finally moved in? What's their name? Now, let me see if I remember how to pronounce it. Bhagavatula. Yeah, that's it. Bhagavatula. Oh, great. What is that, Korean? No, Helen. They're from India. India? Doesn't that real estate agent know how to sell to people like us? They're quite nice, really. He's a vice president at one of the banks downtown, and she's a professor at the university. Such a lovely woman. A real exotic beauty. Not as lovely as you, of course. Oh, and they have a 13-year-old boy. He'll be at the junior high in the fall. Mm, of course he will, because their kind always follows the same pattern. They move into our neighborhoods, take our jobs, and infiltrate our schools. Now, Helen, I hope you're not going to be hostile towards our new neighbors like you are towards that lovely Sanchez family two doors down. You can actually learn a lot from them. Uh, Mr. Bagavatula was telling me about some of the fascinating customs in their country. 
Can you imagine coming from such a rich cultural heritage? The only thing I can imagine is the stench of curry casserole that's going to be wafting across the street. I'll tell you something, Edgar. I am sick of the way this neighborhood is changing. And I'm even sicker of not being able to do anything about it because your salary isn't high enough for us to move someplace nice. Someplace with people like us. We're trapped. We've got Gandhi and his family moving it across the street, Pancho Villa and his gang living two doors down, and God knows who else ready to move in at any minute. And you're oblivious to all of it, Edgar. You're like an ostrich with its head in the sand, tinkering away in the basement while this neighborhood is going downhill. Well, I'm sick of it, and I can't take any more. Things better change soon, Edgar. Do you hear me? Things better change soon. Yes, Helen. Portrait of a Tragically Mismatched Couple, Edgar and Helen Peabody, a textbook example of opposites attracting. He was attracted to her breathtaking beauty while she was attracted to the fortune that would result from marrying a brilliant up-and-coming young scientist. Alas, her beauty turned out to be only skin deep, while neither his fame nor fortune ever materialized. Now they languish in a loveless marriage, sustained by the fear that they've come too far to turn back. But a third party will soon come into the middle of this unlikely union, a guest who will cause the simmering undercurrent of discontent in this household to reach the boiling point. An unexpected visitor from a different neighborhood, one that somewhere in the vicinity of the Twilight Zone. And now, the Twilight Zone and our story, There Goes the Neighborhood, starring Tim Kazarinski with Stacy Keach as your narrator. This bracket should keep the accelerator in place. I do believe this configuration is going to work. Now I better tighten these bolts. Oh, I'm dying to tell someone about this, but I can't believe I almost spilled the beans to Helen this afternoon. Ooh, i got to be more careful. First thing she'd do is call her cousin Rick. Oh, that'd be a problem. He's a pretty sharp guy. I suppose that's a prerequisite for being an FBI agent. If he found out about this, I'd have G-men swarming all over the front lawn. No, no, nobody should know. Not yet. First, I want to perfect the process. And after that, I want to make certain this technology isn't dangerous to humans. Then, and only then, can the whole world know. Edgar J. Peabody has built the world's first teleportation device. Just think... Daily commuters could avoid highway traffic by teleporting straight to their offices. And accident victims could be teleported from the accident site directly to the ER. The possibilities are endless. Ugh. There. Now, I need to run a couple of tests. I'll just turn on the particle accelerator and let it warm up. There we go. Reminds me of that old super heterodyne radio receiver Dad had when I was a kid. <laughs> Always had to let that baby warm up. Now. Edgar! Yes, Helen? Come up here. The garbage disposal broke down again. I, I, I'm in the middle of something, dearest. I don't care. This is important. Get up here now. Uh, all right. Coming. Well, it's about time. I've never seen such a slowpoke. What's wrong with the garbage disposal? Oh, same as always. Made a funny grinding noise, then stopped. Did you throw any silverware down there? Of course not. What do you think I am, an idiot? Oh, no, dear. I'm just trying to isolate the problem. Well, you're the one who wants to be an engineer for the rest of his life, so stop isolating and start engineering a way to repair this thing. I'm going to go down and throw some clothes in the washer. You let me know when the disposal's fixed. All right. Now, let's see what the problem is here. I don't see anything wrong under the sink. 
No leaking, anyway. I better get a flashlight and look down the drain. <sighs> Now, where'd I put that thing? Used to have a flashlight in here. What on earth? Oh, Edgar! Downstairs! Huge! Kill it! Well, what is it? Another spider? No! Bigger! Harry! Kill it! Oh, if it's Harry, it probably is a spider. Oh, where did you see it? Stairs! By the stairs! I'll roll up this newspaper and use it to vanquish the beast for my beauty. Hurry! Good Lord! Did you see it? I saw it. How big would you say it is? Uh, three feet high, maybe? Uh, about four feet long? Oh, what do you think? I think I need a bigger newspaper. No, you dolt. What do you think it is? I, I don't know. Where did it come from? I don't know. Oh, it moves so fast. I know. It, it looks like it has about 30 legs. Little ones that let it glide along like a millipede. Uh, a really big millipede. Oh, you have to kill it. Maybe we should call animal control. That's not an animal. It's a monster. Well, all the more reason to call in a professional. Oh, Edgar, be a man for once. Go down and kill it. With what? I don't know. You're the man of the house. Find a weapon. Gather up the thimble full of testosterone you've got and go kill that thing in our basement. All right. I'll, I'll take this broom. Whatever. Just get down there. Here goes. I'm going to close this door behind you. Well, why, why? So it doesn't try and get up here. Actually, that's a good idea. We don't want it running around the living room. It might try and get out the front door. Yeah, plus, I just shampooed the rug. Oh, great. Where the door closed, I, I can't see a thing down here. I hear it. I think I went over by the furnace. Probably likes the warmth. So dark. I'm gonna have to turn on the light. As soon as I find it. There. Now, where do Please I... do not hurt me. What? Who's talking? I don't see you. I mean you no harm. I hear you, but your voice. It... It's inside my head. Whoa. You communicate telepathically, don't you? Yes, please. Do not hurt me with your weapon. Weapon? Oh, oh this is just a broom. A broom? What kind of weapon is that? It's not a weapon. It's for sweeping up. You know, cleaning. Oh, so you're going to clean me? Is this a way of conquering one's opponent here? No. I, I, well, I was going to hit you with it. Ow! Please, do not. I apologize if I frighten you or your uh, companion. Companion? Oh, oh, you mean Helen. Uh, oh, I guess that's one word to describe her. Uh, oh, where, where are you, anyway? Behind this heating source. I was right. You like the warmth over there in that corner by the furnace, don't you? Yes, it is quite comforting. The traveling through the space-time continuum appears to have affected my body's metabolism. I am very cold. The space-time continuum? Where are you from? Well, it is hard to explain. Suffice it to say, it is a different time. And place. Are you saying you're from a different dimension? I would consider that an accurate assessment. Well, how did you get here? I arrived through your receiving portal. My receiving portal? Oh, the, the teleporter. I left it on when I went upstairs. I, it must have acted like an open door for anything passing through the space-time continuum. Whoa! It, it worked! 
beyond my wildest dreams, it worked. I knew those adjustments I made would do the trick, although I didn't think it would teleport beings from other dimensions. Oh, criminy. I, I guess I should turn it off, huh, before the, this place looks like some kind of interdimensional Grand Central Station. I guess I can consider my latest modifications a triumph. I have successfully teleported a being from another dimension to a basement in Hackensack, New Jersey. You have been experimenting with teleportation? Yes. I have as well. So uh, teleportation isn't a standard mode of transportation where you come from? No. I have been conducting trials in secret. Oh, I know the feeling. I was an engineer on a teleportation project at my company a few months ago. Uh, out of the blue, the uh, government ordered us to cease and desist, but they never explained why. I've heard it's because they're experimenting with the technology themselves for a secret military weapons project, but I think it could be used to improve our way of life. That's why I've been continuing my experiments by myself down here. Where I come from is fear. That teleportation would make escape too easy. Well, escape from what? From a race that recently overthrew our government. They call themselves the Masters. They now hunt down and exterminate members of any race unlike their own. Well, that's awful. So I take it that where you come from, everyone doesn't look like you? No. The Masters do not look like my race at all. They are quite ugly. Well, sounds like it's a good thing you escaped. I am not convinced that I am in a better situation here. What do you mean? My appearance seems to have alarmed you and your companion. You were coming down here to kill me. Well, you have to understand, you look different from anything we've ever seen before. Oh, I am considered ugly? Here. Well, that's hard to say. I, I haven't actually had a chance to get a good look at you. Why, why don't you come out from behind the furnace, uh, the uh, uh, heating source? <laughs> okay. Oh, my. You definitely don't look like any species we have here, but, but ugly? Uh, trust me, I've encountered far uglier beings on this planet. Hey, whoa, uh, where are you going? You don't have to hide back there again. I fear your companion does not share your indifference about my appearance. Oh, don't let that bother you. Helen doesn't share anybody's opinion about anything. Edgar, did you take care of it? Uh, w would you excuse me one moment? I need to talk with my uh, um, companion. Helen going on. Helen, dear, I decided not to kill it. Why not? Well, I'd like to learn more about it. Well, fine. Kill it and slice it open. Then you can look around in its guts and learn all you want. Well, I'm not talking about its anatomy. I, I want to keep it alive, observe its behavior. I don't know, ask it some questions. Ask it questions? Helen, sit down for a moment. Edgar, what's going on? Just listen to me. I'm not sure how to tell you this, so I'm just going to come right out and say it. That creature in the basement is from another dimension. It arrived here through the space-time continuum from a place where it has suffered unbearable persecution. Well, I would like to learn more about it, find out where it came from, whether it's from some alternate universe on Earth or perhaps some other planet in a distant galaxy, and maybe even find out if I can help it. Edgar, you have officially gone over the edge. I mean, I've always considered you eccentric, quirky even, but I never realized there is a hole in your marble bag. Helen, I'm telling the truth. Okay, let's assume for the sake of argument that you are. How did that thing get here? Well, you have to promise not to tell anybody this, but that contraption, as you like to call it, the one I've been building in the basement, it's a teleportation device. The creature was passing through the space-time continuum and employed it as a destination portal. 
Give it to me in English, Edgar, not your usual geek speak. Think of it like someone getting off a train at a specific station, except in this case, the train travels through different dimensions. Great. So we're harboring the commuter from another world. Where's the phone? Uh, who are you calling? I'm calling someone to come and kill that creature. No, Helen. Yes! It's not enough that the neighborhood's been invaded by foreigners from other countries. You have to put out the welcome sign for a giant insect from a different dimension. I've reached the end of my rope, Edgar. It's time to put an end to all this. Hello, FBI. I'd like to talk to Agent Rick Fielding. Helen, please, put that phone down. No, Edgar. There's an illegal alien in our basement, and you're clearly not man enough to take care of it, so I'm calling someone who is, my cousin Rick. Hello. Yes, I'm waiting to talk to FBI Agent Rick Fielding. Oh, he's not in. Um, can I leave a message? You see, there's an intruder in our house. Helen, I beg you. What's that? I wouldn't describe it as a person. No, it's not an animal. It's something much worse. Helen, please. Right now it's in our basement. I'm telling you for the last time... I went down there to do some laundry. All right, I was going to tell you my plan. I threw a load in the washer and turned around and standing there looking up at me I thought of a way we could make a lot of money off that creature. Could you hold on for a second? But I guess you're not interested in being filthy rich. So, go ahead and finish telling the FBI your story. I'll call you back. All right, Mr. Trump, let's hear your big money-making scheme. Okay, uh, here's what I'm thinking. I I learn as much as possible about this creature, uh, who it is, where it's from, what message it brings from the cosmos for the people of Earth. And that kind of thing. Then, since it only communicates telepathically, I become its spokesman. Telepathically? What does that mean? Well, n- never mind that part. I'll explain later. Anyway, we then travel around together, uh, doing presentations at respected technical institutes, you know, lecturing at universities, meeting with world ambassadors. And then we really go for the big time. We appear on Oprah. You're telling me that we're going to get rich because you're going to play Colonel Parker to some illegal alien from another dimension? Think of the possibilities, Helen. Book deals, a movie franchise, and television. Oh, think of the television we could do, Helen. Tell me the whole country wouldn't tune in to see that creature on Dancing with the Stars. Hmm, Edgar, for once in your pathetic life, you may actually have a good idea. You think we could make a lot of money off that... uh, that thing? Millions, Helen. Millions. All right, I'll agree to this little plan of yours, but it better work. I have just one demand. While it's in this house, that beast stays in the basement. I don't ever want to see it up here running around in my clean house with its filthy little insect feet. Do you understand me, Edgar? Of course, it stays in the basement. You won't regret this, Helen. Now, I'd better go back down and learn all I can about it. So then, I finished up by telling her we could make millions. And this convinced her to let me stay alive. Are you kidding? If money is involved, Helen's all over it. You are being protected by a great big dollar sign, my friend. I do not understand all your words, but I comprehend that your plan has saved my life. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, I never thought to ask if you have a name. A name? Yes. What should I call you? Oh, I am identified by a specific sequence of sounds. Oh, would you like to hear them? Sure. Fascinating. But I don't think my tongue could handle that. How about if I call you Al? Is there a meaning to this owl? Mm, Let's just say it's short for alien. Oh, I find this appropriate. (laughs) 
And uh, what should I call you? My name is Edgar. Edgar. Uh, to what species do you belong, Edgar? I am a human. I have heard you refer to your companion as uh, Helen. Yes, that is her name. And what does Helen mean? Uh, it means the most beautiful woman in the world. Oh, is Helen considered the most beautiful woman in your world? Helen is considered quite breathtakingly beautiful. She's what's known as a real head-turner. She once held the record for winning the most beauty contests on the East Coast. Unfortunately, Helen has what we would call an ugly personality. Then, from my point of view, she is not beautiful at all. I'm afraid there are many of my species who would agree with you. I attempted to communicate telepathically with her when I first arrived, but I could not. Oh, she was in too much shock. No, her mind is closed. I cannot get through to it. Are you able to understand her? Oh, yes. Every word. Oh, my condolences. Forgive me for saying so, Edgar, but I sense that you fear. Oh, I never told anyone this before, but I have some trouble standing up to her. She has a very strong personality. So do you, Edgar. It took a great deal of strength for you to come down here and confront a species you had never encountered before. Oh, I, I suppose it did. I would encourage you to confront her in the same way. You mean uh, try and hit her with a broom? Oh, if necessary. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Listen, Al, I've, I've been thinking. Maybe we could share our knowledge of teleportation with each other. You know, sort of combine our brain power and see if we can perfect the process. That is an excellent idea, Edgar. Would you mind taking a look at my teleporter? Maybe you can suggest some improvements. Oh, I have already been examining it. You have come up with quite an impressive design. Oh, for a human. <laughs> well, thanks, Al. Edgar, is that dishwasher ever going to be fixed? Should be good as new by dinner. I picked up a new gasket today. Well, it's about time. There. I need to go down to the basement, get a different wrench, though. I'll come with you. I need to throw a load of wash in, and I don't want to go down there alone. We remember what happened the last time I went down to do the laundry now, don't we? Don't worry. He won't bother you. He likes to stay warm behind the furnace. Good. I don't intend to be a prisoner of the main floor just because you've decided to start taking in intergalactic strays. Interdimensional, dear. Whatever. All I know is I've had an uninvited house guest for three days that looks like it crawled out of a horror film. Everybody in their place and a place for everybody. That's how it used to be before all the foreigners started moving into our neighborhoods. Yes, dear. I'll tell you what we need. We need a government that stops turning a blind eye to this, this cultural invasion. We need to send all these outsiders back to where they came from. So you've said before, dear. I found that wrench I need. I'm going back up. Now, don't take forever to fix it. Aw, what's wrong, Quasimodo? Did that scare you? Well, don't worry. I just accidentally let the washing machine door slam shut. You've got nothing to worry about. Yet. But I'll tell you this. If I don't start seeing some money coming in from this brilliant scheme cooked up by Edgar Rockefeller up there, I will call my cousin 
And the FBI will come here to see what Edgar's doing with that telethingy. And you will be hauled away and dissected like a frog in a seventh grade biology class. You don't fit in here. You're contributing to the decline of what was once a perfect neighborhood. So you just stay down here in the dark where you belong. Modify the subroutine that specifies where the person, or uh, whatever, being teleported, will arrive. Hopefully, that'll put an end to any more random visits to unknown dimensions. If you enter the logic, as I said, it should work. I had been working quite extensively on it before I left my own dimension. So, Al, do you ever, you know, miss where you come from? I do not miss the persecution, of course, but I do miss my home. Mostly, though, I feel... What, Al? I feel guilty about being here. Guilty? Why? I believe I am contributing to the decline of what was once a perfect neighborhood. <laughs> well, where did you get that idea? Well, Helen mentioned it. Look, don't worry about Helen. I'll make certain she doesn't bother you anymore. As far as I'm concerned, you are an honored guest here. Oh, thank you, Edgar. That is very thoughtful. But that is not the only reason I feel guilty. You see, I have left my kind in a place where they endure abuse on a regular basis. It is not right that they suffer, and I do not. Perhaps I have made a mistake escaping from there. Well, you simply displayed a survival instinct, Al. And that's something all living creatures do, no matter where they come from. I understand what you are saying, but I cannot help feeling that I have abandoned my species. I have been thinking that... Perhaps I should go back. Really? Yes. I would only have two regrets about leaving. One is that I would miss you, Edgar. Oh, thanks, Al. I, I miss you, too. What's your other regret? That I did not get to see more of where you live. I have so far only seen this... What do you call it? Hackensack Basement. That's true, isn't it? Okay, Al, you and I are going on a little field trip to the main floor. You can get a look at my world through the living room window. No, but I thought Helen did not want me on the main floor. Now, Helen's out getting her hair done. She'll never know. Come on, let's go upstairs. Oh, uh, wait, wait a second. Uh, maybe you should wipe your feet first. All of them. Well, here's the main floor. Come on into the living room. It ain't the Ritz, but uh, it'll give you a decent view of the front yard. I am not familiar with this Ritz you speak of, but your upstairs is very pleasant. Okay, I'm gonna open the curtains. You ready? Yes. Here goes. I give you Hackensack, New Jersey, in all its glory. Oh, my. It is so bright. And there are so many colors. What is that substance that covers everything? Is it plant life? Yes, we call that grass. And, and what is that tall, thick plant in the middle of the grass? That's called a tree. 
Edgar! What is that creature? Oh, what creature? Oh, oh the neighbor's cocker spaniel. Uh, oh, that's called a dog. It does not look like you. Oh, thank you, Al. I mean, uh, it is obviously a non-human species. Is that what I have heard you refer to as an animal? Yes. Your world, Edgar. It is beautiful. Oh, th this is nothing. You're catching us at the end of winter. You should see it in the spring when all the flowers are blooming. You know, if you stayed here till then, I could show you colors that would dazzle your eyeballs or, or whatever it is you see with. Oh, what about Helen? Why, well, Helen isn't always home. I might even be able to smuggle you out of the house in some kind of disguise so you could see beyond Hackensack. Why, well, I could even show you new work. Oh, sounds very uh, exotic. Well, besides, at some point, Helen's going to expect us to go on our big press tour. What if she finds out you lied to her about that? Well, I wouldn't say I lied to Helen. Just that we had a change of plans. The press tour is sort of postponed permanently. And Helen need be none the wiser. None the wiser, hmm? Helen! But what are you doing home? Lorraine had a cancellation, so she did my hair early, but never mind that. What's that monster doing up here? I told you I wanted it to stay in the basement. I, I, I um, wanted to familiarize him with the surroundings. Uh, he needs to be uh, accustomed to them when we begin our lecture tour. Save it. I heard your little speech about postponing the lecture tour permanently. You have no intention of making any money off that overgrown bug. And you never did. That's it, Edgar. I'm calling Cousin Rick right now. No, you're not. Give me that phone. Oh, Nobody is going to find out about Al. You hear me? Nobody. Al? <laughs> Isn't that adorable? You've named your little pet. Edgar, I have caused you enough trouble. Tell Helen I have decided to go back. No, it's okay. What's okay? I have decided I need to go home. You don't have to do that. Do what? But... I want to. It is where I belong. Are you sure? Who are you talking to? Al. I mean, the creature. He communicates telepathically, but only with me. I can hear him, but you can't. Oh, how precious. Since you seem to have such intimate contact with alien creatures, why don't you blow in a call to the mothership and tell them to pick up E.T. here? Edgar, I do not wish to cause any more strife between you and your companion. Trust me, it was there long before you arrived. But I have given this a great deal of thought. And while I do not wish to endure further persecution, I believe it would be more honorable to suffer with my species than to run away. Are you sure about this, Al? Positive. Well, if you're convinced it's what you want... I am. I will go down and prepare to be teleported. Edgar, will you tell me what on earth is going on? Yes, Helen, I'll tell you. Al has decided to return to his world. Yeah? What's the catch? No catch. He's decided that helping his species is far more important than his own survival. You know what that means? What? It means that in spite of the fact that he comes from a place you've never heard of, grew up in a culture you are completely unfamiliar with, and communicates in a way you could never hope to comprehend, he is a far nobler creature than you will ever be. That's the last of the calculations. I can't believe 
believe I let you fill our basement with all this junk. Helen, what are you doing down here? I want to be here to watch you throw the switch. That's not necessary. Apparently it is. I couldn't trust you to do something as simple as keep that overgrown insect in the basement, so I certainly don't trust you to send it back to Planet Cockroach. No, oh, fine, fine. Just stand right here so you're out of the way. There. Al, are you ready? Yes. All right, you stand over here. Good. That's perfect. Edgar. Uh, yes? You have been a good friend to me. Thank you. Al, it has been a genuine privilege to know you. Come on, enough with the teary goodbyes. Just get it over with. All right, I'll run the activation sequence. Here goes. So long, Quasimodo. Multi-legged friend, I had a change of heart. I do not understand. What is this change of heart? In this particular context, it means I decided not to send you back. I took your advice and stood up to Helen. I sent her there instead of you. Why? Well, I started thinking about where you're from. How there's a race there called the Masters, the fact that they've declared themselves superior to all other races, the way they exterminate anyone who's different from them. And I came to the conclusion that Helen would be right at home there. I cannot argue with your logic. Come on, let's recalibrate the teleporter. We need to figure out how to transport an entire species of many-legged creatures to a more compassionate neighborhood. quote here from St. Augustine. Beauty is indeed a good gift of God, but that the good may not think it a great good, God dispenses it even to the wicked. Case in point, one Helen Peabody, whose husband Edgar has come to the conclusion that a pretty face is not the sole manifestation of beauty. Thus, a man of great intellect finds that one never stops learning about human nature, while a woman who has been celebrated for her loveliness finds herself deported to a place where beauty is relative, an ugly, intolerant little corner of the Twilight Zone. There Goes the Neighborhood, starring Tim Kazarinski with Stacy Keach as your narrator, was written for The Twilight Zone by Barry Rickard. Heard in the cast were Meg Falcon and Roger Mueller. The producers of The Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises and the Rod Serling Estate for making this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Lamari for Falcon Picture Group and Westwood One. Custom Foley effects, sound design, and mixing are done in the Cerny American Sound to Picture Theater by Cerny American creatives Bob Benson, Craig Lee, Todd Beyer, and Tim Cerny. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to contact us, visit our official website at twilightzoneradio.com. Doug James speaking.